Hi everyone and welcome to the first video of the Python computational chemistry tutorial. This tutorial is going to be oriented to beginners who have no idea of Python and they want to implement Python or use Python package to uh, for their research in computational chemistry or protein engineering or bioinformatics. So if you are an advanced user, this course is not for you. So the idea of this course is we want to learn the basics of Python and apply it immediately into something we are interested in. Could be computational chemistry or could be bioinformatics or protein or whatever. The idea of the course is when people want to implement Python into the research, they either go to learn from a pure Python course, which might has which might be away from what we are interested in. It's just an abstract Python course, so you get bored because you don't apply what you learn into something you are interested in. So you may lose the motivation. The other way is they go to the available Python packages for computational chemistry and they try to implement the, the code or the script immediately without knowing the basics, without knowing the, the basics. So then you get confused and then you give up. This is from my personal experience. So together we will try to learn basics of Python from scratch and try to implement as much as, as we can into something related to proteins or computational chemistry. So today I will try to introduce Jupyter Notebook, which is a browser based uh, coding environment for Python. So if we want to write our first script, we should go to new and choose Python 3. So it will open the Jupyter environment for coding. And the first thing I will do, I will rename this script to something I can recognize later in my working directory. So you see here it's untitled notebook format. So this is the default name. I will make it, let's make it Python, sorry, video one. Let's make something like this, okay. So then I can download it as a Python Python uh, notebook. I can share it with anyone. I can edit and whatever. We can also save it as PDF or any format you want. So when I go to my working directory, I will find my script here. And in this working directory, I will find everything I export from figures, data sets or whatever. Also from if, if I want to import something, I can import it from here without introducing any path because, path because I'm already in this directory. So before I go on, I forgot to tell you how to download Jupyter, but this will make the video long and I don't want to waste your time. I will include it in the video description. I will set some instruction on how to get Anaconda, the distribution of Python, which contain Jupyter and how to open Jupyter. So this is uh, quite straightforward. So now we named it as Python version one. So as you see here, this, the, this box, we call it cell. Cell could be a coding environment, or could be a text environment. So now it's in the coding mode from here. So I may insert another cell above or below or whatever. And you write the code and either you run it from here or you hit shift and enter and it will be implemented. So the first thing I would like to teach you is to write an introduction text here. So you go to the, the from coding mode, you choose markdown. So now it disappeared. So it means it's in the text mode. So if you write a hashtag and I write Python. And if you write two, two hashtags, I can write uh, intro. This will make subtitle if you write two hashtags so let's implement it yeah it didn't work <laughs> that is because i forgot something i have to to get a space okay so you see i have python as a title and a sub a subtitle as an intro okay so let's check if we make it in a code and run it so i will get nothing because now jupyter or python is treating this as uh, a comment or as a code. So in coding, comments are not, I mean, uh, you can get, you can, it just for you, it cannot be computed by Python. So let's make this as a markdown and run it again. So here we have our title, Python and enter. So let's get back from the second cell and make it again into code. Okay. 
So Python can do a lot of stuff from basic stuff to very, very complicated. So if I say four plus five, so I say run, it will say nine. But from Python syntax, this is not very useful because I cannot use the, the output or the input in farther uh, script, part of the script or farther computation. So you have to assign variables. To, to your data so that you can call it later and you can use it in further calculations. For example, if I say x equal to 4 plus 5 and I run it, so now x is equal to, to 9. So I can call it from print. So I ask Python to print the value of x. So I have it as 9. And now I can use it in any further calculation. For example, if I say to Python, please know that y equal to, sorry, y equal to my x plus plus 2, for example. And I will say run it, okay? So what do you expect? y should be 11. So I will say to Python, please print the value of, of y. Okay, so it's 11. So what I'm trying to say is you have to set a variable name so that you can call it later and do whatever you want. Okay. So this is very simple, but Python is not a calculator. You, your scientific calculator might be more, more efficient. Python is made for more compu uh, 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 complicated stuff. So as I said, I will try to connect it to something related to proteins. So our first mission is to calculate the delta G gaps free energy of a mutation to check the protein stability. I open this page randomly and I get this equation. You know that the delta G for mutation equal delta G for wild type minus delta G for mutant. Let's try to do it for Python, in Python. So if I told Python like delta G for wild type equal, for example, uh, 500 kilojoule. Okay, and I say delta G for mutant for mutant equal to 243 it's just a random number and I say these units are for people because not for Python if, if you write the hashtag you comment it out so Python will not calculate it will not recognize it this is for you Python deal with only with numbers okay so this is for us and then we will say it run okay so now i have for example the energy for for the for the wild type 500 and for the mutant is 243 and from this equation we know it is delta g mutation equal to wild type minus mutant so i will tell python that sorry what was the name we can call it uh something delta or we can call it stability which is delta g also so delta g equal what equal delta g wild type minus delta g mutant and i will run it okay so when i if i want to know the value i can call python please give me the stability Sorry. Yeah, because it's capital. Okay. Sorry for that. And I will say run. Yeah. It's 257 kilojoule. Something also very important. You may want to convert this into joule. So you will say, for example, stability. You multiply it by, uh, by, 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 by 1000, so to convert it from kilojoule to joule, and then you say run. Okay. But the problem is Python doesn't update the stability, the, 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 the variable uh, automatically. You have to set a new name for your stability in joules. Okay. Because if I said to Python, please print me the stability. Again, it is capital. Okay will give me this value however I multiply it by 1000 it doesn't update it so you should say that 
stability for example in joules okay stability let's call it stability g sorry j equal to my stability multiplied by 1000 and then you run it okay so when you call sorry when you call it as stability in joule okay so you can you can get it so what we learned now is how to set a variable name sorry how to set a variable and how to do some physics calculations so this is for the first video i don't want to make very long videos and then we will continue like this as i said it's quite basic and it's for beginners